You know that moment in every video game where you think you've finally beaten the final boss, only to realize there's a secret, even harder level? Yeah, that's pretty much what it's like trying to land a job in tech after getting your CS degree. But don't rage quit just yet. Let's talk about whether computer science is still worth it or if it's game over for traditional degrees. So, uh, you've probably seen all these movies and TV shows where programmers are like these cool hackers or startup geniuses, right? And everyone's telling you that tech is the future and CS is your ticket to success. I mean, the numbers seem pretty enticing. Software developers are making around $110,000 a year on average and data scientists are pulling in even more at about $120,000. But here's the thing, you're about to embark on a quest through the unpredictable tech job market, and it's not exactly a walk in the park. There are some trials ahead, and you might find yourself wondering if you accidentally set the difficulty to nightmare mode. But hey, that's what we're here to figure out, right? Alright, let's talk about expectations versus reality in CS. You know how some games have misleading trailers that make them look way more fun than they actually are? Well, a lot of students are finding out that computer science isn't exactly the coding party they signed up for. It turns out CS has one of the highest dropout rates among college majors. It's like students are signing up for a game they didn't realize would be so brutally difficult. So what's the deal? Why are so many would-be tech wizards tapping out before they even get to the good stuff? Well, it's kind of like going to a concert expecting to hear your favorite band play their greatest hits, but instead, they spend the whole night doing experimental jazz fusion. A lot of students jump into CS thinking it's all about programming and building cool apps, but then they hit a wall of theoretical concepts and math that they weren't prepared for. The truth is, computer science isn't just about coding. It's this whole big thing about computation, information, and automation. You've got algorithms, data structures, and theoretical computer science thrown into the mix. It's like ordering a pizza and getting a whole buffet. Some people love the variety, others are just overwhelmed and wondering where the simple pepperoni slice went. And here's where it gets really fun. Even if you make it through the degree, you're not out of the woods yet. The tech interview process? It's like someone cranked up the difficulty to impossible and threw in some rage-inducing puzzle levels for good measure. You think you're prepared, and then bam, you're asked to solve complex problems under tight time constraints. It's like trying to speedrun a game you've never played before while someone's breathing down your neck. But here's the kicker, even with all these challenges, having that CS degree still gives you an edge. The average recruiter, 99% of the time, is going to prefer the person with the degree. It's like having a rare cosmetic item in a game. It doesn't necessarily make you better, but it sure makes you stand out. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, I've heard about all these successful developers who don't have degrees. And you're right, they exist. But they're like those players who beat Dark Souls using a Guitar Hero controller. Impressive, but not the norm. Most developers in the industry do have a bachelor's or master's degree. It's not strictly necessary, but it definitely helps. Here's the real challenge though. There's this massive gap between what you learn in CS programs and what you actually need to know for jobs. It's like training for years to be a warrior, only to find out the final boss fight is actually a dance-off. Many graduates find themselves needing to self-study or gain additional skills outside their degree to meet job requirements. But don't rage quit just yet. There are signs of hope in the job market. Some candidates are securing multiple interviews, suggesting that opportunities are still out there for determined individuals. It's like finding those hidden power-ups in a game. They're not always obvious, but they can give you the boost you need. Now, you might think you know all the paths to level up in tech, but here's the twist. The most powerful route might be the one you least expect. It's like realizing the unassuming NPC in the corner actually holds the key to unlocking god mode in your career. So let's break down this tech education map and see what secrets it's hiding. First up, we've got the traditional computer science degree. It's like the main quest line in an RPG. It covers a lot of ground and gives you a solid foundation. You're looking at a mix of programming languages like Python, Java, and C, plus a heavy dose of algorithms and data structures. It's not just about coding though, you're diving into the theory behind computation, information, and automation. But here's where it gets interesting. The CS curriculum throws in a bunch of math that might feel like unexpected boss fights. We're talking discrete math, calculus, linear algebra, and statistics. It's like the game suddenly switches from a coding adventure to a math puzzle, and a lot of players aren't prepared for that plot twist. Now, some people argue that all this theory is overkill. It's like training to be a warrior and spending years studying the molecular structure of swords instead of, you know, actually swinging them. But here's the thing, this theoretical knowledge can give you an edge in the long run. It's like having the complete bestiary and item compendium memorized. You might not use it all the time, but when you do need it, you're you're glad you have it. On the flip side, we've got the self-study and bootcamp routes. These are like speed runs. They focus on getting you job-ready skills as fast as possible. You're learning practical coding, maybe some web development or data analysis, and you're building projects that you can actually show off. 
The bootcamp path is like joining a guild that power levels you through the basics. You're in an intense, focused environment, and you're learning alongside other newbies. It can be a great way to build a network and get that initial boost into the job market. Self-study is more like playing in sandbox mode. You've got the freedom to explore whatever interests you, but you also need to be really self-motivated. It's great if you're the type of person who likes to tinker and experiment, but it can be tough to know if you're on the right track. Now here's a common misconception. Some people think getting a CS degree automatically unlocks the secret high-paying job achievement. But in reality, the job market is more like a multiplayer game where the difficulty level is always changing. Having a degree can definitely help, but it's not a guaranteed win condition. The truth is, no matter which path you choose, you're probably going to end up doing a lot of self-study anyway. The tech world moves fast, and even CS grads often find themselves needing to learn new skills to meet job requirements. It's like the game keeps releasing DLC, and you need to keep up with the new content. So what's the ultimate boon here? Well, it's not about finding the one true path to tech greatness. It's about understanding your own playstyle and choosing the route that fits you best. Maybe you thrive on theoretical challenges and want that comprehensive CS background. Or maybe you're all about practical skills and want to jump into building things as soon as possible. Now, imagine you've chosen your path and leveled up your skills. You're ready to face the final boss, the ever-changing tech job market. But here's the plot twist. That AI you've been worried about, it might just be your unexpected ally in this boss fight. You know how everyone's been freaking out about AI taking over tech jobs? Well, turns out it's not the career-ending villain we thought it was. In fact, about 70% of developers think AI is going to be more like a sidekick, helping them level up their productivity instead of stealing their jobs. It's like getting an unexpected power-up in the middle of a tough level. But let's talk about the real game here, the tech job market. It's not just one big monolithic thing, you know? It's more like an open world game with a bunch of different quests you can take on. You've got your classic software development route, sure, but then you've also got these cool side quests in data science. AI, cybersecurity, cloud computing, and even game development. It's like having a skill tree with a ton of different branches to explore. And here's something that might surprise you. A lot of software engineers are actually pretty happy with their jobs. We're talking like four out of five stars happy. It's not just about the fat stacks of cash, although let's be real, that doesn't hurt, but also about feeling secure in their jobs. Like 74% of IT pros in North America think their job security is either good or really good. It's like having a save point you can always go back to. But look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The tech world can be as unpredictable as a randomized dungeon. We've seen some big name companies doing layoffs and there's definitely some uncertainty floating around. It's like the difficulty level keeps changing on you mid game. Here's the thing though, even with all this chaos, the outlook for CS grads is still pretty solid, especially if you're into stuff like AI or cybersecurity. It's like those fields have some kind of invincibility cheat code or something, but you want to know the real secret to surviving in this crazy tech world? It's not about memorizing every programming language or getting the fanciest degree. Nah, it's about being able to adapt and keep learning. The tech landscape is changing faster than Twitch chat during a big reveal, and the only way to keep up is to be ready to learn new things all the time. It's kind of like those games where the rules keep changing. One minute you're playing a first-person shooter, the next it's turned into a rhythm game. The players who come out on top aren't necessarily the ones who were the best at the original game. They're the ones who can quickly figure out and adapt to the new rules. So yeah, whether you went the traditional CS degree route, did a bootcamp, or taught yourself, the key to long-term success is the same. You gotta be like water, my friend, flexible, always moving, always ready to take on new shapes. Because in this game, the only constant is change. So, is computer science worth it? Well, it's not like there's a cheat code for success here. It really depends on what you're into and what you want to do. The cool thing about CS isn't just the education, it's all the opportunities it opens up. Internships, research gigs, networking. But here's the thing, a lot of people think CS is just programming, and that's why so many drop out. If you stick with it though, you can end up in all sorts of tech roles. Look, success in tech isn't about following some preset path. It's about finding what you're passionate about and being able to adapt. As one expert put it, if you want to get the degree, pursue things that are interesting to you because it's so much easier. Nobody has to tell you to play video games if you genuinely enjoy it. So figure out what your tech game is and play it your way.